Detail present. I'm honored to be a part of today's ceremony. We are standing on sacred ground. To me, all of our national cemeteries are sacred. About 20 miles from here is the Golden Gate National Cemetery. My grandfather was buried there. He was a lieutenant in the United States Army, and he served in France during World War I. My grandmother is buried there with him. She gave birth to three sailors and one Marine all fought in World War II. My father's twin brother is also buried there. He was a Marine radio man who fought in the Pacific during World War II. I scattered my father's ashes on the bay, not far from here. He was also a Marine radio man who fought in the Pacific. My Aunt Marine and my Uncle Pat are buried in this very cemetery, not 15 feet from here. They met while serving in the Navy. I have loved and honored these people all of my life, yet they never considered themselves special and never thought anything extraordinary of their military service. To my knowledge, not one of them ever received a Medal of Valor. This ceremony makes up for that. Every wreath presented today gives thanks and acknowledges a hero. I don't often talk about my Vietnam days. To do so makes me cry a lot. And we all know that a bawling Marine is not the Corps' image. However, a friend asked me to speak today, and I can't let a friend down. In a ceremony similar to this one, President Lincoln gave, us, gave his famous Gettysburg Address. Think about this for a second. Not once in that brief speech did President Lincoln utter a single proper noun. There are no names of the fallen, no names of the generals, no names of any heroes, not even the battle is named. Could this have been an accident? Or could it be that President Lincoln was making a broader point about wars and the soldiers who fight them? 
perhaps he was saying that all are heroes and none are heroes. All who serve, sacrifice. And to honor one over another is to discredit all. Oh, grunt with some thoughts I'd like to share with you. I am who I am today, and I am speaking here this morning because of two words. Semper Fidelis. Those two simple words are the entire Marine Corps motto. They are Latin, and they mean always faithful. They have guided the United States Marine Corps for 238 years and been a large part of my life for 65 years. I don't know a better example of Semper Fidelis than what I experienced in Vietnam in April of 1968. On April 5th, a 14-man squad of recon Marines known as Team Dallas Girl led by Lieutenant Daniel Matoka, entered the Dongha Mountains at Hill 190. Hill 190 was near the DMZ and heavily occupied by the North Vietnamese Army. Team Dallas Girl was supposed to look and leave. Unfortunately, they made contact with the NVA and Lieutenant Matoka was shot in the chest and died. Most of the members of Team Dallas Girl were wounded and fortunate to escape. However, they were forced to leave Lieutenant Matoka where he had fallen. The next morning, two platoons were sent in to recover Lieutenant Matoka's body. There were approximately 80 of us, led by Captain Sams and his XO. We may have been outnumbered 10 to 1, but my guess is that the ratio was far worse. The NVA knew we were coming. They knew the Marines did not abandon their dead, and they, had and they had prepared very well. The area was ringed with small arms and automatic weapons fire, and we landed in a thoroughly planned ambush that included heavy artillery. The firing started before we had exited helicopters, and we hit the ground in the middle of the worst combat I have ever seen. As luck would have it, I carried a squad radio, and was told to stay at the landing site as part of a three-man rear security force. A surviving member of Team Dallas Girl took the front and led the way to Lieutenant Matoka's body. I could only watch as Rudy Salazar, Alan Mack, Tom Callum, and the rest of my friends fought their way up the hill. As it turned out, they only had to go about 100 yards 100 yards of st steep, thick jungle with enemy machine guns trying to cut them down every inch of the way. I saw explosion after explosion as the NVA mortars, rockets, and artillery poured on them. It is my understanding that Rudy Salazar and Alan Mack died when they triggered a booby trap that had been rigged to Lieutenant Patoka's body. Our EXO had both of his legs blown off, our captain lost an eye, and Tom Callum was hit in the face. I saw Tom Callum carry the EXO down to the landing site and go back to guide our captain out. Tom was a bloody mess, but he never stopped. The battle lasted about three hours, and when we returned to Camp Carroll, we learned that we had two dead and 40 or so wounded. We never did get Lieutenant Matoka's body. In June, another Marine unit attempted to recover Lieutenant Matoka. They too were unsuccessful. And one more Marine died in the process. 35 years later, Lieutenant Matoka's remains were identified and he was returned to his family in Texas where he was finally given the funeral he deserved. Tom Callum is doing well today. He is a retired appellate judge and the bravest Marine I have ever known. And while there's only one Tom Callum, there are many courageous Americans who serve our country every day. It doesn't matter how a person has served this country. If you greased airplanes as part of some unknown reserve unit in Montana, or were in a Coast Guard outfit that never left Lake Tahoe, you served this country and were vital to its security. 
Rudy and Alan died in their service to America. And there's no doubt about their commitment to this great nation. But what about their mothers and fathers, their grandparents, their brothers and sisters, nephews and nieces? What of their wives and lovers? What of their children? They also served. And we must not forget them or take their sacrifice for granted. I have been asked why I joined the Marine Corps, and the answer is complex. But to keep it short, I thought it was the best way to serve my country, and I wanted to make my father proud of me. I've also been asked why Marines kept going back for Lieutenant Matoka's body. The answer is, that's what Marines do. Our attempt to recover his body is the real meaning of Semper Fidelis. It is not just faith in the Marine Corps or faith in America. Semper Fidelis is the eternal faith we have in one another. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for the wreaths you present today. Semper Fi. At this time, our armed forces representatives will lay a ceremonial wreath in remembrance of their branch of service. Private First Class Warren Jensen, 793rd Field Artillery Battalion, 19th Corps Artillery, will lay a wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Army. He served in Normandy, northern France, the Ardennes at the Battle of the Bulge, Rhineland, Central Europe, ending at the Elbe River, where they met the Russians. Upon his discharge, he joined the reserve, retiring as a captain, commander of 105 millimeter howitzer battery. Last Memorial Day, he was presented with the French Legion of Honor Medal by the French Consul General at this cemetery. Now, Commander Kurt Burkhan, Strategic Sea Lift Unit, San Francisco Naval Operations Support Center, Alameda, will lay a wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Navy. Now, Sergeant Ed Collins will lay a wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Marine Corps. Now, Captain Alexander Simpson from Air Force ROTC Detachment 85, University of California, will lay a wreath for those who are serving and have served in the United States Air Force.
Now, Captain Gregory Stump, Commander, San Francisco Sector, U.S. Coast Guard, Yerba Buena Island, will lay a wreath for those who have served and are serving in the United States Coast Guard. Now, Captain William Timmons, Chief, Pacific Area Current, Future Operations, U.S. Coast Guard, Alameda, will lay a wreath in memory of those who have served and are serving in the United States Merchant Marine. And now, Pearl Harbor survivor Chuck Kohler will lay a wreath in memory of those POWs and MIAs who served. Some of them have never returned to their families and us. Please welcome Spike Shaw, Bosun Mate, 2nd Class Petty Officer, U.S. Navy Reserves, and the Warrior Watch, who will conduct the POW MIA ceremony. Please join me with great honor and respect as we celebrate the missing man table. The table is round to show our everlasting concern for our missing men. Reminds us of the life of each of the missing and the loved ones and with a red ribbon, symbol of our continued determination to account for our missing. A slice of lemon on the bread plate is to remind us of the bitter fate of those captured and missing in a foreign land. The candle, excuse me, a pinch of salt symbolizes the tears endured by those missing and their families who seek answers. The candle burns shining the way home for those that are still away from us. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain those lost from our country, founded as one nation under God. The glass is inverted to symbolize their inability to share this evening's toast. The chairs are empty. They are missing.
Please join soprano Elizabeth Kuntz as she sings. survivor Chuck Kohler would like to say a few words. I don't do this because I think that we're any different than anybody else who has served. It's not the individual, it was the event itself that demanded the attention. I, I, I never miss a chance that I possibly can to pay honor and tribute to those shipmates and comrades that I lost so long, long ago. 1,999 of them were my fellow shipmates and over 400 of them were comrades in arms. And I'd like to pay just a special tribute not only to them but to all of those who have served and we have lost. Their gallant hearts have quit beating. Their active minds now rest. Always busy hands now idle. Lie folded on their chest. Their earthly journey completed. But their work is never through. No matter how hard and how long they work, there will always be more to do. With smiling face and joyful heart, they would help most all who would ask and do with pride another's work as though it was their own daily task. They did not seek after diamonds or gold or other precious things, just the satisfaction of a job well done and the happiness that it can bring. If you would miss their smiling faces, then this is what you must do. Watch for signs of their undying love, and they will always be with you. Thank you.
taps will be played by Bugler Petty Officer Lena Gemmer, Navy Sea Cadets. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep standing while we re The reeds before you represent the commitment of America to remember the fallen. We also want these reeds to symbolize our honor to those who have served and are serving in the armed forces of our great nation. And to their families who endure sacrifices every day on our behalf. To our children, we want you to understand that the freedoms you enjoy today have not been free, but have come at a cost that someday you may have to pay yourself. As a nation standing together, we can defeat terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Thanks to our veterans, <coughs> we have the freedom to do just that. I would also like to recognize Kara Kohler, an Olympic athlete who is with us today. Please help us lay reeds at the grave sites in the designated area. There are wreath boxes behind you containing the reeds. I ask that you let those who sponsored a wreath take one before everyone else takes a wreath. When you lay the wreath at a grave, 
take a moment to look at the information about the person who is placed there. These were Americans with families, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, just like you. When you go home, look up the person's name. You may not receive any information, but you may be amazed at the information you find. Thank you to everyone for attending this morning's ceremony. We hope you'll join us here again next year on Saturday, December 13th, 2014. And thank you to all of the organizations and participants who volunteered their time and effort for this ceremony. Thank you. So, I'm coming? taking a wreath down to my dad, who's a Marine. Good. 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 Aww. Because they don't do it there.